We in the army just say, at ease. quiet uh, while we have our final and a, a really wonderful um, a last speaker of the day, a great partner and friend of Vets in Tech. So it's my honor to introduce Carol Eggert from Comcast. Carol is a U.S. Army Brigadier General. Um, she is Senior Vice President of Military and Veterans Affairs at Comcast NBC Universal. Carol brings more than 30 years of military and civilian experience to Comcast. In her civilian role, she assisted various organizations in the private, government, and nonprofit sectors with their initiatives in knowledge management, strategic planning, and project management. During her military career, she served in a variety of command and staff positions and completed numerous overseas deployments including a 15-month combat tour in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom as Chief of the Women's Initiatives Division <laughs> and Senior Liaison to the U.S. Embassy Baghdad where she conducted a full-scale analysis of women's initiatives and developed a strategic plan for the economic and political empowerment of Iraqi women. Under the U.S. Secretary of State, she is the recipient of numerous awards and commendations in recognition of her contributions to the military, including the Legion of Merit, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and multiple awards of the Meritorious Service Medal. You rock. <laughs> so, uh, her, Carol's leadership in the private sector has been recognized by Hill Vets, who placed her on their 2016 list of the 100 most influential veterans in America. The Philadelphia Business Journal, who named her one of their 2016 veterans of influence by We Are the Mighty, a military-focused media brand, who in 2018 recognized Carol as one of its mighty 25 in, uh, on an annual list recognizing individuals who are making a difference for military service members, veterans, and their families. And by Women Veterans Rock, a nonprofit focused on women veterans that named Carol their 2018 Leaders and Legends Honoree of the Year. Thank you, Carol, for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, is that enough to get you to stop eating your pizza? <laughs> I'm thinking, what is it I can tell you that makes you stay here? I mean, I know we are flowing the drinks. I thought they were going to start after I was done, but now. Do you want a drink? I don't think that would fit with my military bearing. Somebody would take a picture, and then our congressman would know or something. But you betcha, I'll have one as soon as I'm done. Um, I'm wondering, who's brave enough to raise their hand and tell me what they wish I would talk about? Like, you're sitting here for some reason. What are you hoping I would cover? Yep. Well, no, that's what I want to know. What do you wish I'd talk about? Comcast expansion plans for faster internet and non stuff. <laughs> As a customer? Cool, cool. Five, think 5G. Think that, talk to that gentleman right there. We do take any of our, we're working really hard on customer service. And I'm actually working really hard on customer service for our military community, making sure we understand some of the special needs of the military. Think. You got to deploy, we ought to be able to suspend your service, not make it turn in, all that stuff. But unless people understand some of the challenges of military service, they're, they're not going to set those programs up. Yep. Can you talk about why Comcast is a great Yeah, we're starting with the question and answer period. Why is Comcast a great place to work for veterans? Well, I flew out here from Philadelphia to talk about that because we are committed to the military community. Um, we have a team of nine people, if you can believe that, nine people committed to engaging with the military community, both as applicants and as employees. 
Um, over a hundred years of military experience, so we walk the talk, everything from a caregiver to guard, a reservist, a pilot, a combat medic, me, maintenance company commander, or maintenance uh, group commander. Um, so we walk the talk, we understand the military community, I think that's a lot of it. Uh, we advise our, our Comcast family. I report to the president of Comcast and the COO of NBC Universal. That's how much they value making sure we understand how to engage the military community. So there's all sorts of programs, and you'll see some of them back there on the back. Yep. Could you talk a little bit about Comcast Ventures and areas that you're excited about? Isn't that cool, Comcast Ventures? And we also have Comcast Labs out here. Does anybody know about Comcast Labs out in Sun Valley? So they're actually hiring. They do a lot of our development work. So check them out, and we do what we can with them to help them understand what military talent brings. So please look at Comcast Ventures. They're our investment arm um, out here looking for new products that will support what we're doing in um, the cloud space, in customer products. So uh, definitely something you want to look at. Yes? Yes, uh, Carol, I, I studied uh, in the Midwest at Wichita State University in Kansas. And something I kind of noticed around the rural areas were things like uh, um, maybe not, not not many competitive infrastructure for like IT and communication. Are there are there any strategies like that Comcast has to maybe bring more of the um, those communication efforts to rural areas? So we're talking about the digital divide and how it impacts rural areas. We're partners with the Veterans Administration on trying to solve that problem, as well as with the government on how do we address that. A lot of it is in fact infrastructure. Um, it's really a problem for the VA because they're trying to put in place telemedicine. Well, you're not going to be able to do telemedicine if you don't have digital access. So one thing we're doing and, and Cox is doing, uh, Walmart is doing, is putting um, clinics, telemedicine clinics in Walmart uh, so that veterans can come in and, and use their telemedicine benefits. So we're looking for innovative solutions to digital literacy. One thing we do where we do have infrastructure is we provide low-cost internet for low-income veterans, $9.95 a month. There's some brochures over there because we recognized if veterans don't have access to the internet, they're not going to be able to apply for a job. They're not going to be able to work with the VA. Um, and that's where you start upstream. We don't want to wait until veterans are homeless and then try to come up with a, a solution. So we try to make sure they have the tools they need to support their employment readiness. Um, and I'm really proud of that program. We just started it this year, but you think things are simple? At least I was used to in the military, you could say, let's do this, and it just magically happened. Well, that doesn't happen in the private sector. You yeah, gotta talk to finance, what's it gonna cost us? You gotta figure out systems, how do you even recognize if they're military? How do you prove they're low end? I can't believe the complexities of making something happen. It's a good thing I'm, a, I'm in the pain in the ass category and I keep pushing. Because there's this shiny object attitude that, you know, you go after the shiny object and you can very quickly be replaced by the next shiny object if you don't keep pushing. And I find that to be very true in the innovation space. All right, so we'll have some time afterwards for um, questions and answers, but thanks for, thanks for bringing that up. Did you know that the unemployment rate for veterans now is at 2.7%? And for the general public, it's at 3.8%. So there is competition for military talent. That's the good news. Amazon has a program in place. I'm really proud of some of the great things they're doing. Um, they have a DOL apprenticeship, and we're going to talk about some of that. But they, they shared military service, either directly or as a spouse, is a significant life experience. So we need to own that life experience that fosters focus, resiliency, collaboration, and leadership. Veterans and spouses who combine leading edge tech skills with that life experience are strong additions to many companies. But if Amazon didn't realize that, they wouldn't be hiring veterans. So, so much of what we have to do is to inform, empower, and educate the private sector. And that starts with all of us telling our stories. One thing I do when I'm out there is I don't say thank you for your service, and I always advise other people not to say thank you for your service. Say, hey, tell me a little bit about your service. I just said that to you gentlemen, sir, didn't I, John? Yeah. And I just asked you, tell me about your service. I didn't say, hey, thanks for serving the Air Force. I said, what the hell did you do? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> what the heck did you do? And that's what we need to do to educate the private sector. So tell your story. 
even if you don't want to. I, uh, I, I tell a story about, uh, you know, I go to Home Depot, I, which by the way, I need to say, she, she said I retired as a Brigadier General. I started as a private, I was enlisted for 12 years, I was an E7, I saw that there's a lot of opportunity to give back and I went to OCS and they said, you know, what branch do you want to focus on? Like, do you want to go in, um, what do they always suggest, adjutant, intel, medical service corps. I said, anything but a girl branch. Because I knew even back then, so that was 1982, that you don't have opportunities unless you're in those branches. Now I'm so happy that we've gotten so far and that women now can serve in any branch, but that back then, maintenance ordinance was about the dirtiest branch I could have gotten into, but now it's artillery, it's infantry, we've got ranger grads. Um, so please don't just think of me as some general up here talking. I spent a lot of time in the trenches and I realized that our NCO Corps is the back uh, bone of anything we do. So I just mentioned some of the good news, which is we have a lower unemployment rate, but what's the bad news? We still have folks that don't know how to get into the tech community or really any job. And there's lots of different reasons for that. And I wanna talk about some of them and then also to give you some tips on how to get around them. Um, so let's just start with uh, LinkedIn. Well, first of all, do you all know that LinkedIn gives a free premium membership to any 9-11 vet and military spouse? Take it, that's a lot of money. So use that benefit. Talking from just our talent acquisition teams, I'm interviewing now for a couple of positions. First thing I do is go to their LinkedIn profile to see who they are, what they do, what have they done, who are they connected to. So make sure your LinkedIn is up to date and use that great benefit. But they said the market for talent, this is interesting, is gradually shifting away from specific degrees to specific skills. So tech skills as well as management skills are those that are rising to the top. So that's good news for veterans, because last year we learned that veterans were five to six times more likely to list certain technical skills. So list your technical skills that you gain during your service or in other jobs. You know, we, we were brought up thinking it's all about the degree you have, but now it's so much more about what have you learned along the way. Um, so don't think just tech skills. I hate the term soft skills. Does anybody have a better name for it? Important management, people skills, emotional intelligence sounds kind of corny too, but those things are critical and that's what we pay for in the private sector. We can teach. There's programs for the technical skills, but the number one pr reason people get fired is not how they perform in their technical job, but can they get along with teams? Can they, I call it the jerk factor. Can you leave the jerk factor at the door and work with everybody? We remember our military days when people hoarded power. You'd go to ask for something and oh, I can't give you that. I mean, it was horrible. You don't see that in the private sector and those people are kicked out pretty quickly if we aren't collaborative. So make sure you identify your communication skills. I'm not gonna call them soft skills. Nothing soft about them, your social skills. We had to learn them from basic training when we dropped to do push-ups anytime we didn't support the team. If you ever, anybody ever get in trouble for saying I and had to do push-ups? Yeah, you're not allowed to say I in the military. So it was part of our DNA back then. I've also found a big challenge is lack of understanding in the private sector. The private sector that doesn't have veterans helping it to understand. Uh, less than 1% serve. There isn't a draft anymore, so more and more, I think, it, what is it now, 60% of people don't know anybody who served or is serving, and back during the draft, it was down to like 25%. So they're not familiar with what we do, what we have done, what skills we bring. So one thing we've done at Comcast is make sure we educate our employee family, our hiring managers, our supervisors, let me ask you, which would you rather be, a captain in the Army or a captain in the Navy? Forgetting the different services. Navy. 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 But what do you think a civilian if they see that? They're not going to understand the difference that one has way more years of experience than the other. Um, so we have to understand ranks. 
We have to understand pay scales. I still have people coming to me saying, we want to send socks to the people who are deployed. <laughs> they have this idea that we're all poor. <laughs> or I want to send food. You know, we, we all have mature battlefields now, generally, except for the Marines, who are, right? <laughs> in, in many ways. So we have created what's called the Comcast Employer School, where it's online, no-cost content for employers to help understand and engage with the military community. Everything from 15 things every veteran wants you to know. What do you think the number one is? We went out and interviewed. We're partnering with Psych Armor. It's a great organization that put together all this content. What do you think the number one thing every veteran wants you to know? And this is particularly for my Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coasty friends, we are not all soldiers. How many speakers have you heard get up and say, soldiers, we're so glad you're here today. And the first thing you do is tune them out because they don't get it. So uh, this content really helps our employers understand a little bit more about the military culture. Because we did a funnel report. If hiring managers don't understand the military culture or what they're looking at on a resume, they won't interview. So when we made this commitment to hire veterans, in, in 15 we said we'd hire 10,000 veterans by the end of 17, what I found was, because I wanted to know if there was a bias, and I found that we doubled our applications and we did not increase our interviews. So that right there showed me where the problem was. I mean a little bit, but certainly not in, in ratio to the number of applicants. It means that those who were comfortable interviewing military talent, had that background, continued to interview military talent, and those who weren't, didn't. So we set about building internal resources to help our hiring managers understand military talent. I don't believe it's on the veteran to do all the translation. We have our responsibilities. There's lots of programs out there to help us, but if the private sector doesn't meet us in the middle, we're not gonna solve this problem. So that goes back, and once again, to tell your story. Talk to people. When I, uh, I said it, when I, um, I'll go to Home Depot. Do we have Home Depots out here? Yeah. Lowe's? Yeah, yeah of course. Um, you know, I still have the star on my car, car, because you can't get those damn decals off. Um, plus, my kids think it's cool. But I'll get out at Home Depot, and somebody will come to me and say, oh, you know, in the parking lot, where, you know, what do you think they said? Where did your husband serve? It's really quite common. Um, I actually go to the VA and they say, what's your sponsor's ID yeah. number? But they'll say, where did your husband serve? And just because I'm a little miffed, I'll say, oh, he served in World War I, just to see if they can do the math. <laughs> and uh, then I'll tell them a little bit about my story and about women who serve and about the military. So I just lessened that divide a little bit by taking four minutes. But we all need to do that. We tend to hide. Notice all the pins I'm wearing? We gotta wear these silly pins too because people will ask you, oh, what did you do? Tell me about your service. Um, especially here, I think, in, in tech country, we don't necessarily take ownership of our military experience. So wear it proudly and talk about it. So now, those are some of the challenges we have and what we're doing at Comcast to help with those. We also created um, a SHRM certificate. Does anybody know what SHRM is? Any HR people out there? Society for Human Resource Management. I saw that HR and TA professionals, if we're gonna change this, have to understand the military. But they also care about their continuing ed credits. So we created a certificate program with SHRM. Doesn't cost them anything. They don't have to join SHRM. And it's Veterans at Work Ready. So they take about 15 hours of content, take a test, and then they become Veterans at Work certified. That's so that we could penetrate the HR and TA community. And um, I'm hoping this will make a difference. But now, what can you do to, um, to counterbalance some of these challenges? So there's a host of programs out there. So you're really gonna have to do your research to figure out where they are. Um, there's tech finance training programs seeking to create a pipeline. LinkedIn has that. There's uh, Microsoft Software Systems Academy. Remember that one? These are all apprenticeship tech programs. 
Here's one that you need to jot down. Syracuse University, onward to opportunity. Raise your hand if you know about them. They are amazing. No cost certification programs and they pay for the certification exam for most of the recognized tech, HR, and project management certifications. So let's just take project management. It's a $500 test. Project management can often be your way into an organization. I'll give you an example. So on our team or at Comcast, think of a C-130J pilot. Pretty, pretty big plane, a lot of responsibility, a lot of cargo to keep track of, a team. He couldn't get a job when he got out of the Air Force. He's continued to serve in the uh, guard, but he couldn't get a job. We don't need pilots is what he most often got. So he started emphasizing his project management skills. He went and got his PMP from Syracuse, and then he was hired at Comcast as a project manager. And that hiring manager went on and asked him, hey, do you have any more buddies? We want more like you, because they saw they can manage a program, a project. It's no different than what we did in the military when we did mission analysis. And he has now, I'm not happy, because he was on our team, then I took him, and he just got stolen by uh, Blue Vector. Do you may know about Blue Vector cybersecurity? We just acquired them. He has an active duty security clearance. You know how long it takes to get those. And he has those PM skills. So he just joined uh, as the uh, operational manager for Blue Vector. So emphasize those PM skills and don't get in trouble so that your security clearance stays easy to get back when you're active again. Um, that, that's really important. So think about Salesforce also has one. They're right here. They have vet force programs. So look and see who has all of those programs and which ones you can participate in. Hiring our heroes, U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, has a lot of programs to help you out. So we there's another one is a fellowship program. Is anybody still active? Okay, guard, reserve, or active duty. So getting ready to go into transition. So the TAPS program, the Skill Bridge program, has U.S. Chamber of Commerce fellowship programs where in your last six months you're able to participate in corporate programs, leave for 12 weeks, go to a company, uh, spend 12 weeks with them. You gotta go back to your base every now and then to check in. And you explore what's available in those companies. You're still getting paid by the military. We've hired OD, over 25 fellows out of Fort Carson. And these are mid-level positions. These aren't entry-level positions. So E7s, you know, captains, uh, good, good salaries. And that's one of the requirements is you're not talking about entry. So check out the fellowship programs at your installation um, at U.S. Chamber. All right. So I mentioned project management. The Army folks in here, MDMP, who knows what that is? Yeah, we hate it, right? Military decision-making process, all those long nights in the ops room having to come up with a plan. But I mentioned project management. Those skills transfer so easily to what the private sector needs. An example is how when we're doing mission analysis, we always start with why. Why are we doing this? What is it? Why are we doing it? What are we hoping to accomplish? What's the business problem or the mission problem behind this? But what I find in the private sector, and you probably do too, what do they start with? How? How? Before they even define what or why. So that disciplined thinking is an asset. So emphasize it. You're able to take a problem, break it down. You did it all your life in the military, and you can do it in the civilian world because it's, it's a critical need. So focus on that and look into, um, uh, as I said, um, Syracuse University. And I have found that um, really to be a real challenge in the private sector is the need for project management skills no matter what you're doing. Being able to lead a team. Okay, women veterans, how many do we got here? What, five? I can count them on one hand. Okay, so for all my battle buddies in the room, battle buddies, shipmates, wingmen, what do the Marines call them? Devil dogs? Or? Yeah. They don't have a name, right? Just Marines. <laughs> Just Marines. They don't have a special name for Got Your Six or something. 
You need to help us with women veterans. Women veterans do not take their place in the warrior ethos. They don't take their military benefits. They don't use their health benefits at the same rate as men. So we're all in this together. So next time you go to one of these events, bring three women with you. If anything, people will think you're cool. You know, you've, got, you've got three women on your arm. But we need to help women. We're all in this together. They were our battle buddies on the, on the field. So let's, let's bring them out here and, and give them the support they need. There's a lot of special programs for the women veterans here. We now have a women's center, veterans center at VA. You've got special programs out of SBA, Small Business Administration. Um, so seek out those women opportunities. Mission Continues is one. Um, and we're always available to help you at Comcast, but we have made working with women veterans um, um, a touch point for this year and helping women. I actually, I wear a, um, a pin that says women proudly serve, just so we can get people to recognize what women have done. Keep in mind, I started in the Women's Army Corps. We had to wear hose, stockings at all times, and lipstick. And we were not issued weapons, nor were we given weapons training. So imagine the journey I've seen. It's way cooler now. Here you have a woman with a purple heart that got blown up in Iraq. Um, I'm thinking about writing a book from whack to warrior, lipstick to M16 or something like that. I think it'd be kind of cool. Lipstick to dipstick, my journey. Lipstick to dipstick, I like that. My journey as a maintenance uh, professional. Okay, cool. Good one. Somebody write that down. Um, SBA. So those of you out there, both as entrepreneurs and as veterans, please check out SBA. They have special programs just for veterans. And I, I wrote down some of them, and it's three pages. So uh, special programs for women veterans, disabled veterans, uh, re working with our resource partners, so like SCORE, who does mentoring in the business community, uh, National Veteran Small Business Coalition. You just gotta research. So take the time to look at what they do. Um, grant opportunities for businesses. I call it the wild, wild west out here. When I first came here, you know, I, I had retired, I wasn't looking for a job. I had volunteered to say, hey, if you want a woman veteran to come talk in some of your efforts. So that's how I got known in the community. I wasn't charging. <clears throat> and uh, that's how Comcast then called me and said, hey, can you come help us do this? What's the we biggest weakness we in the military have? We always say, we always say yes, right? All you gotta do is say, can you help? And we go, yeah, sure. And then I think, what the hell did I just say I'd do? I just gave up my, my time watching the Hallmark Channel. I know. <laughs> did you lose all respect for me? Yeah. All right, did you know that it's DOL that's responsible for veteran employment, not the VA? So you've got to check out DOL and all of their, DOL vets is what it's called, and all of their special programs, especially the apprenticeships. You can sign on for an apprenticeship, I just mentioned that Amazon has one, and use your GI Bill to offset starting salaries that might be too low. So please research DOL vets. And then I've already mentioned what the industry has to do. So those of you who are industry leaders, make sure you're giving back to the military community. Don't just hire your needs, but use your resources to help other companies. Um, have a veterans network. How many of you are at a company that has a veterans network? Yeah, that's a critical component of veteran retention, military talent retention. Uh, helping helping uh, the whole community understand veterans. We created this thing called Challenge Grants where if the vet nets in our company, we have 20 of them uh, all across the company, more than 9,000 members, if they would do an event that involved other resource groups, Ben, Black Employee Network, Out, uh, Women's Network, if they would do joint events, we would give them 5,000 bucks to do that event. Now, why did I do that? Yes, because I found out vets were having all the fun times and they're only talking to vets. <laughs> you know, we like to talk to each other, but they weren't increasing the acumen of anybody else. So, of course, money always talks, so that helped. Um, also, I'd ask all organizations to be involved in those organizations that are serving those who serve. Vets in tech. Understand the good ones, the ones that have reach, and put some money towards that. 
I'm not our foundation, but I advise the foundation on where to put foundation dollars. So that's another thing I think that's important to understand um, who to support. Remember Wounded Warrior Project and their, their fast dive, which they've now recovered, by the way, and they're an amazing organization, but think about those companies that might have been involved with them at that time, uh, getting that public notice for you know fun parties out in Las Vegas. So stressing that you don't have to code to be in tech. So I'm here as a woman, a woman that's a senior leader in a tech company, but there are so many jobs as long as you, you might not be the specific technical skills, but you have to know how to work with subject matter experts. I'll use an army term again, warrant officers. How many of you worked with warrant officers? Okay, they weren't easy to manage, were they? No. When I, is there any warrant officers in here? <laughs> when I took over a maintenance company, I was pregnant and I had nine warrant officers and I was the first female commander. Did you ever see them? Pardon me? Did you ever see them? <laughs> well, that's one reason they didn't like me all that much. I made them go to the range for the first time. Uh, they had to go to the field. No more pencil firing. Um, <laughs> But they're amazing. You have to understand the technical skills that they bring, but they also have to have warrior skills. By the end of it, we were all very close. In the beginning, it was a, a tough road. So working with technical folks in a company is also a challenge. That's where those communication skills come in. So knowing how to work with subject matter experts, there's all kinds of jobs in our tech companies. And having that background in technology that you had in the military. Remember net training, new equipment training? About every two weeks we got something we had to learn. So take credit for that. We really are a highly technical uh, service, all of us. But I think many people still think of us as World War II, Tom Hanks, out on the battlefield in tents. They don't realize that you know our maintenance, um, our mechanics use iPads to access the, uh, the uh, documentation they need. Not that that's a big technical skill, but that's an indicator of um, how common this has become. So I'm going to leave you to get back to the drinking, and I can have one, um, with a couple of points. So approach your goal, whatever it is, as an employer, as an entrepreneur, understand the organizations. I think of Bunker Labs as a great partner out here in San Fran, locally, as well as across the nation. But approach it with the same mission analysis skills you had to do in the military. Take your time and figure out what it is you're trying to do. I've just given you tons of homework. So research, I would add, and understand private sector compensation. Did you have a 401k in the military? We do now. We didn't then, right? You had the, yeah, but did they match it? No, no, but at least you could put some money away. They now match it, the new, the new uh, retirement system. Also, don't expect to duplicate pay and allowances. Oh. We were given pay and allowances because we put our life on the line, our family sacrificed, it wasn't taxed, it was food, it was clothing, it was housing. There aren't too many companies that are gonna do that for you. But if you go out thinking you're gonna duplicate pay and allowances but your life isn't at risk, I think you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. Expect and understand your base pay but then also understand total comp. When I joined Comcast, fresh out of the military, I was really stupid, guess what I said? Thinking about military pay. I said, pay me whatever you pay vice presidents. Thinking, you know, all vice presidents got paid the same thing, you know, that there was a pay scale somewhere. Boy, was I dumb. I was a senior vice president by the next year. Once I caught on and realized, you do have to negotiate for pay. So get comfortable with that. Understand total comp, restricted stock units, employee stock purchasing, uh, what's taxable, what isn't. What's the progression look like at, at a company? But I think that's a really tough one for a lot of veterans. They come out and, and think they can just jump right in. Probably my biggest point is start. You have to start somewhere. Throw the darn pebble in the pond and watch the circles go around and you'll get some action. If you don't throw the pebble in the pond, that water stays stagnant. So take action, do something, 
my son, I now have three millennials. My son's an engineer, a design engineer, but when he was applying for jobs and that kind of stuff, he said, well, I'm not going to do that. They, they won't hire me. And I said, damn right, you can bet they won't hire you if you don't even apply. But how do you, but kids will do that. They'll just say, oh, I'm not going to do that. Not that he's a kid now. He has a great job as a design engineer, but you have to take the, the first step. Register with the VA. How many of you have registered with the VA Health? Good. A lot of women don't and a lot of veterans don't. They think, oh, I don't need VA health. You might not ever need them. But if you don't get assessed and registered, then when you do need them, it's going to be a problem. When I was in Iraq, I was in several explosions. I had a hairline fracture of my hip. We didn't think too much of it. It was a hairline fracture of the femur. Or what's the ball called? Is that the femur? The ball and socket, so of the ball. Um, but just last year, it totally crumbled and collapsed. Had I not gone to the VA when I first got back, we wouldn't have noticed that. So the VA, just imagine if I didn't have health benefits, the VA could have supported me. Luckily I had private health benefits, I didn't have to do that. But they now know that that happened and if I have more problems, it's covered. So make sure you at least go register for your VA benefits. You don't have to get them yet, but at least go over what how much the military beat you up. Also, use your darn GI Bill benefits. It's $100,000 laying on the table. And you don't have to use it for college. I'm amazed at the number of people who don't use it. I used every bit of mine. My son was so upset when he went to college, when he heard that you could pass it on. Sorry, bud. I got my PhD on the GI Bill. That's another thing, lifelong learning, and it doesn't have to be school. It's things like this, it's seminars, it's conferences. Put yourself out there. Be uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable with what you do. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things you can focus on. Join veteran service organizations. Team Red, White, and Blue. Uh, Team Rubicon. Mission Continues. Guess what? All these people have jobs and are doing fun stuff. Like Bunker Labs, they have Bunker Brews. You go talk about the military and then you have beer. How cool is that? And they have jobs and so they can help you with the network. Also, follow your leaders. Who, who do you know? He just mentioned uh, this morning, he mentioned um, at DIU, or no, even at Microsoft, a military person who's now leading something at Microsoft. Figure out where the military people are and reach out to them. Don't hesitate to reach out to your former commanders, your former battle buddies, shipmates and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I get calls like that all the time. And military people generally will not say no. They'll, they won't get you the job, but they'll help you figure out what to do. So look back over your network. Who's made it in the civilian world and give them a call. Send them a note. American Legion and VFW, <laughs> we all go, who's gonna go there? Uh, you know, that's the old time they smoke, they drink beer for 25 cents and play pool, and when I go in, they say, uh, what's your husband, where do you serve, and I love to pull out my general retired ID card and watch them. Uh, but they have changed. They really are addressing the needs of the 9-11 vets. <clears throat> so give them a chance. They actually have yoga, you can imagine. And a good example, read the story of the uh, Post 43 right outside of the Hollywood Bowl. You remember a post, isn't that the coolest thing ever? Amazing. It's amazing. So the 9-11 vets sort of revolted against the old time vets, made that a very active post, redesigned it, refurbished it. It's the coolest place ever. If you're ever in Hollywood, stop in, they'll welcome you. They're doing great employment programs. So is the VFW. Um, so read up about that. Don't, don't, don't discount the VFW and the American Legion, even though they're the old time ones. Uh, reach out and offer to help. I gave you my story. By asking to help, you also meet more people. So use your skills. Um, go to meetings. Join professional organizations. So I mentioned project management. PMI is a project management institute. They have chapters all around the place. Uh, HR has chapters. So figure out your professional chapters and join them. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, find the military members in the companies and reach out to us. We're on the web. I mean, you can usually search Amazon, um, USAA, any of us. We all have people like me and figure out who they are and just drop them a note. 
and, and they can be a big help. For those of you in the room that are entrepreneurs, supplier diversity. Every company, um, just about anywhere, uh, has a supplier diversity program and that supports veteran owned businesses. So make sure you understand how to get into the supply chain of these companies. And you can do that by searching on the web. All right, for those of you that had like a bunch of cookies and cupcakes back there, maintain your physical fitness. <laughs> that gives us that military bearing that people look for and respect. And it also helps you stay alert and stay engaged. I purposely accept invitations to events where I have to wear my uniform just so I force myself to like quit eating a couple weeks ahead of time so I can still fit into it. Um, but physical fitness matters. When I got back from Iraq, I was pretty screwed up. Um, yeah, I was like really screwed up. And I um, <clears throat> trained for and ran the Philadelphia Marathon for the first time ever with my daughter who had just graduated from college. And I believe that that's what put me back together. Fitness, resiliency, having a purpose, and then I went on to uh, teach at the Army War College. But I don't think I could have done that had I not focused on wellness. Wellness creates resiliency. So whatever, whatever's haunting you, um, physical fitness will help. And wellness, I don't like to call it, everybody hates physical fitness, but most of us, we're okay with wellness. So take care of yourself. I just read an article this morning about getting out in nature, nature bathing. That soothes the stress hormones. Yesterday I took an Uber all the way out to the coast, seven miles but an hour, um, here in San Francisco. I don't get that part. Just so I could see the sunset over the Pacific. And, and that like is rejuven rejuvenating. And, and that gives you strength. And it also makes you feel <clears throat> humble and small and your problems are pretty little when you think about those things. Much like combat does for you when you've seen that what uh, countries struggle with, you realize your place in the world and your problems aren't as big as you might think they are. I'm gonna leave you with one last thing. Can anybody here identify VUCA? It's my favorite acronym. It started with the Army War College uh, to describe the current strategic environment. <clears throat> it's, it's a concept that describes volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Is that not our world now? It's our world in innovation. It's our personal world. We have to be able to respond to the VUCA environment, especially in innovation. So recognize where the volatility, complexity, ambiguity is and uncertainty and master it. And then we'll, we will have something to give back to the innovation community. So that concludes my formal remarks. Do we need questions or we're just going back to the beer? I shouldn't have mentioned beer. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be able to stick yeah, around? Right. There, okay, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering, I don't know if this question has been addressed in reference to the VOC Rehab Program, the Employment Track, and the Small Business Disadvantage Track, because you mentioned um, being minority certified. Um, can you speak or address anything on that? So I, I mentioned you have to understand your uh, what do we call it, situational analysis, do a, what do we, environmental scan, understand the programs that are out there, and that is one of them. Small Business Administration has programs for disabled vets, for women vets, and the VA also has VOC rehab programs. So you start with researching it and going to the VA and saying, you know, what are these programs, can I qualify? I can't give you all the answers, but you can go research it, and these are incredible programs that people don't take advantage of. Definitely use it. What else? Anything else? Well, thank you so much for your time and attention, and it was great coming out here. And I'm going to jump on a red eye. Wish me well. Thank you, Carol. That was awesome. What an, it was so great to hear this range of, like, of services all in, in one place at one time. So that was amazing. Thank you. Did I say I have a new hip? Yeah. yeah. Don't jump. I, I thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jump.
one jump. Take the stairs, please. So Carol mentioned, um, you know, get to know your chapters, you know, around, around. And one of the things uh, that we did here during this conference was we brought together Vets in Tech chapters from around the country. And I, I really want to point out a few of our chapter leaders and point to where they are in the room. And if I forget somebody, please let me know. But I guess I'm gonna go with who I spot first. George Ploss from Chicago. We have Jonathan and Donald from New York City. We have Cindy and Miguel from San Diego and others from San Diego. What I want you guys to do is if you're from San Diego, Chicago, New York, or any of the chapters, please go find these guys right now. I want to come around and talk to all the chapters. Um, Sacramento, we had quite a few people here from Sacramento and our chapter leaders. So it, it, did they leave already? But raise your hand if you're from Sacramento. Okay, I think they left already. Oh, great. Okay, yep. Oh, Daryl, great. Okay, so Daryl, see Daryl over here from Sacramento. We have Miami. Miami. Miami's in the room, right back there. Okay. Austin. Austin. Woohoo! Austin. And I think DC might have left. Um, so, and, I, and we do have other chapters, but I just don't know. We're just launching in Seattle. Um, but if there's one other major chapter that I forgot that, that I didn't call out, just shout out right now. But, uh, but yeah, those are actually out of all of our chapters. We had at least half of, half of our chapters here this, this time around, so I'm super excited. And uh, I want you to get to know your, the, the chapter leaders that are here in the room. So please, please mingle with them. So with that being said, that, I'd like to just go ahead and, and thank you all so much for being here. Uh, this means, means a lot to us to be able to host this event and bring together the tech ecosystem to support you all. So I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope that you found this event to be valuable that you learned some important things and that you made some great contacts. We definitely are open to any feedback, so please see me or any one of our staff and any ideas that we might do to improve things uh, next year around. See Michael right there? No. <laughs> and more from the team. Uh, I didn't get a chance to introduce two new team members, so Keevan, would you please come to the front of the room? And um, Keevan, you may have seen him around today, I should have introduced earlier is new with Vets in Tech and he's working on veteran outreach and community development. Would you like to do a brief, uh, brief interview? Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so hello everyone, my name is Keevan Peterson. Um, I am Marine, I eat crayons, and I also like long walks on the beach. <laughs> um, I'm, I just graduated from Wichita State University. Um, I studied management information systems and uh, really became uh, passionate about communication as it pertains to um, business analysis and data visualization. But one particular thing that I became really passionate about was student veterans. Um, and the community. And particularly when I say the community, I'm talking about veterans, dependents, spouses, and how they bring so much value to everyone that's involved in, whether that's the state, the region, um, and in the United States. So I really, really wanna thank each and every single one of you, especially our partners and sponsors, um, but especially those who support veterans as well. All of y'all bring so much value to us and this community here. Um, and also to our chapter leaders, that they can take that back home and enrich their communities. So please continue to advocate on behalf of our communities and on behalf of our nation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome to the team. And Melissa, Melissa, right, I'm so happy to have you as well. Melissa is also a veteran and military spouse. Would you introduce yourself, Melissa? Melissa is going to be responsible for our education programs, which we've expanded greatly this year. So, Melissa. 
Thank you, Catherine, for having me. Uh, this is my second day, so thanks uh, for everyone with your, pa your patience for me. I am Army veteran. Uh, I served as an Intel analyst. Hello. Hello. And uh, after that, I went, uh, picked up contract. I was in Iraq. I was in Iraq for almost three years, actually, with CACI L3. Uh, then I uh, took a government civilian position with DIA, GS-13. And I'm a military spouse. My husband's in the Air Force and was relocated here. He works for Mike Brown at DIU, formerly DIUX. Cool. Yeah, so uh, I'm army strong and he flies high. Is that right? <laughs> uh, so we're making a good, a good team and I'm, I'm glad to be part of Vets in Tech. I, it's awesome when I moved to the Silicon Valley area because of him, I, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And uh, I interviewed with a cybersecurity position. I was kind of wasn't trying to find myself. And when I heard about Vets in Tech, I, I was really it, uh, just excited. And I love the mission. I love to help other people and especially to advocate for both uh, veterans and military women veteran and military spouses and veteran spouses because I think that uh, we're like was mentioned we're uh, sort of kind of shy about it I actually hadn't even told some of the people that I was military spouse and I was a veteran myself so I, I really want to reach out to that community um, so those of you here who are veterans your spouses are also welcome to the training and I really want to make sure that we capture them and, and their needs as well so thank you for being here and please spread the word our training is available for, for military spouses and veteran spouses. Thanks. And welcome to the team. And I, I, see, I see Abdul over there who's been helping us a great deal. I want to thank you too, Abdul. Thank you. And uh, we'll be announcing you sometime soon. Um, and, uh, and so I want to really thank the team that put this together. Michael, you did so much. And, and then and Kate and the, the gang. So thank you so much for all, all you did, all of you who put this event together. Um, and then finally, most importantly, again, to our speakers and to our sponsors, thank you so much. And Carol, one other thing, you did help us launch the Women Vets in Tech program, and so I hope to continue that great work with you. Uh, so thank you again, thank you to our sponsors, all the speakers, all of you for coming. I hope to see you, uh, if not sooner, next year, and we'll probably double in size for next year. All right, let's do it. Thank you.